Hi. In this video, I would like to show you guys how I created my latest uh, Horsed Nebula image uh, using Serial, where we're going to integrate four sessions into one image. And to do that, the first thing that you need to do, first of all, you need to have several sessions uh, captured with your Dwarf Telescope. And what you need to do first, like you always do normally, I mean, if you want to do an image like this, you're going to have to um, stack your images yourself in serial. You know, you can need to download your subs from the Dwarf. And uh, in this video, I'm not going to go into details how to do that. If you are interested, I think I have videos for that already on my channel. You need to check it out. So basically, when you do that, uh, in your working folder, you're going to have at least a light folder, maybe some darks if you have biases, flats. And when you stack your images in serial, you're going to have a result.fit file. So we're going to use this result.fit files to integrate sessions. We don't, we don't need to take all the sub images and, and add them together. That will be possible too but that's uh, very time consuming and uh, you're gonna use a lot of hard drive space hard drive space and uh, if you don't want to do that and you want to do it quick the easiest way to do it that every time you have a session and you basically stack your sessions and you have a result.fit file then you collect those and uh, create a working folder for cilia which i already created here uh, this is like a horse and nebula image folder for serial. Uh, in that, I created a lights folder. That's all what we're going to need because we already stacked the images with darks and all that. And um, in this folder, I have the four sessions bits that I renamed uh, basically to from 000. zero, zero uh, to 001, 0002, 003, you know, if you have more sessions, you can do that, and basically you can, uh, you know, rename the file in this order, okay, so, after that you are done with this, then you're gonna have to open up Serial, and you can just, you know, easily, the easiest way to do it, just use the script. Okay. So basically, we choose our home uh, working folder and it's desktop here. Wherever you put your work folder, I have it on the desktop right now. So I choose and open. And then you can just use this script. OSC pre-processing without DBF. So basically, there is no darks, BR biases, or flats. So you just click this one, and it's going to be done very, very quickly. It's working already. It's all done. So when you open up, you're going to have result.fit. And this is the one where you integrated basically four different folders. You can see that serial, uh, if you do this in PixInsight, PixInsight does a better job. Uh, but sometimes some of the sessions are not accepted in uh, for the imaging integration in PixInsight. So serial is really fast and it's easy to use. So I just did that. Okay. So when you have this done, then after that, I just went to, uh, for my image, I use Pix inside for the rest of the processing. So at this point, I can close Serial and open up Pix inside. And uh, this is a different image here, but I can open the one that created in Serial. Desktop 
and open this as all the fruit owner uh, machine. Here we are. Okay, and the second step will be I'm going to do a gradient correction here. So this one works. I don't know, that's interesting. It doesn't take very long. All right. Anyway, uh, the next step I'm going to use Well, I could do color calibration, but I don't think uh, I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to go right away into the Convulsion Blur Exterminator. This is a paid software that I think is very, very useful for, for especially for the Dwarf Telescope. Uh, what you can do with this one, you can shrink the stars, make them nicer, rounder, and smaller. And also you can sharpen the image a lot. In order to do that, basically what you use this software, you have sliders, that's all. You can make them, you know, basically this is like just think star hollow hollows and sharpen stars and sharpen non-stellar. And all you need to do is just move the sliders. And when you, uh, basically done then you just drop this on the image and now this is going to take a little longer usually you know especially on the mega stack image that's uh, well, could be up to 100 megabytes or something like that from the, uh, in the dwarf that can take a minute or two or a couple minutes and that blur terminator is done as you can see it's an insane difference we already can see how much more detail is visible basically you can see the before and after here stores are a lot you know a lot smaller a lot more uh you know a lot sharper it's almost like a, a pro image i mean the star quality and all that like a, a much more expensive telescope I don't know what we're gonna have from the D3. I I don't have any uh, at my hand yet, so but I'm very anxious to see what we're gonna be able to do with the D3. Anyway, the next step we can put this to the side here. The next step we're gonna clean up the image. There is another software that I, basically these are uh, plugins that I'm going to use in Pix inside. It's called uh, Noise Exterminator. This is basically going to denoise the image. You can also just move the sliders for details. You can have more. You need to be careful if you're going to add too much details, then you're going to have eventually artifacts that you don't want. So I keep it mostly lower than 40 here. And I don't want to do too much denoising because that sometimes blurs the image a little bit. So let's go. You can do later if you don't. If you're not happy with it, you can do more denoising, or you can denoise eventually the starless image later. But anyway, let's just do this one too. As you can see, that's basically took uh, eliminated a whole lot of those noisy particles in the image, and uh, it looks looks a lot smoother. 
so when we're gonna stretch the image basically you can almost get rid of all the noise in the image before and after you can see how much how much noisier the image was before now that's all gone okay all right the next step is basically uh, we didn't stretch the image yet, so we're working all these software works the best if the image is linear and this is why you need to stack your image yourself because as of now and even i think in the dwarf tree the one uh the stacked image that provided by the telescope is already stretched so it's not a linear image okay so it's not gonna if you can you can work with that i'm not saying it's not working but this software works the best on a linear image all right so the next step is that we're gonna remove the stars for that there is another plugin called star exterminator That's gonna take about another minute or two or something. All right, this is done too. So keep it in mind, this is all uh, still linear mode. So we're gonna take our star image and just put it aside for now. We're gonna use it later. And we're gonna start to work on the starless image, okay? So what we can we can, we can put this aside too here. So the next thing we're gonna go to linear mode again, and now we're gonna stretch the image. To do so, I'm gonna open up the histogram transformation. Like the create a preview, and in Pix Insight, we use the histogram. You know, moving these sliders. You apply and as you see you don't want to click too much here you want to keep all the good data. There we go. Maybe this for now. Okay. Maybe we can stretch a little bit more initially. Hmm. Looks like there's a little bit too much green in the image. I don't know. Maybe we can stretch this down a bit more. We'll do something like this, I guess. I guess that's good enough for the initial stretch. So we can apply and then we can close the histogram transformation for now. And the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna open up the curves curves transformation. And we open a preview. And with this one, you can work wonders, basically. So you can add more light to the image. So 
and you can create an image to your basically to your satisfaction or whatever you like I mean as you see there is almost any kind of color that you can you, know, you can you can add greens I mean with the three basic colors green blue and red you change them back and forth and you can almost get any kind of a color uh, variation that you want you could change the whole thing to greenish uh, hue or 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 whatever you like you know whatever i mean i'm always what i'm trying to do i'm looking at a bunch of pro images uh, and i try to choose the natural ones and and i compare my images to that and try to do the best what i can and what i like the best at the end to my taste basically but uh if you don't agree with me well then do whatever you, you know uh, you like so basically what i'm trying to do i just try to recreate the image what i did uh, what i posted online so let's just do a similar color here so i can apply this here and reset maybe add a little more blue I see a bunch of green here and I don't I'm not don't really like that. So what I'm gonna try to do when you go to this side of the curve basically that's going to change the more the background the darker colors and when you go to the higher position then you're going to change uh, add the color that you choose basically to the more the highlighted areas so when i see green on the background um, i can remove that here on this side okay there's maybe a little bit too much blue in it too it's just uh, whenever I remove blue, there's a green coming back. So I want to be careful with that. All right. Let's apply this. Let's try with luminance. Let's make it a little brighter. At the same time, make the background a little darker. Something like this for now. This is good enough for now, I guess. So what we can do, we can close the curves here. And uh, to make more, you know, to remove some of these artifacts here and add more details to the image what i use what i do basically to my images i save them at this point uh the, the starless image i'm gonna save it probably to the desktop save as and i save it into a, uh not to the fits i'm gonna create a, a transfer uh, this is save it as a tiff file because that's compatible with Photoshop. And uh, 
well, I can, you can you can rename it if you want to. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna save it to desktop, so it's easy to find. Save, and I'm the easiest way to work Photoshop if you save it in 16-bit uh, format. So I'm gonna do that, and then after this, I can basically open up Photoshop. a few seconds all right now I can open up the image from desktop let's just see this one I guess all right now I have several things that I can do I'm I have several plugins in Photoshop too that I use uh, I basically have everything what was possible to buy from RC Astro and for me uh, they are like worth every penny anyway gradient exterminator I'm gonna use first I gonna see I just gonna use a very basic gradient uh, removal here and as you can see that cleared up the image pretty nice and the second thing what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go into camera raw filter. And now we have we have a bunch of options here that we can do. Now as you can see there are some still some artifacts from stacking here. Uh, you can go and uh, basically erase those in Photoshop easily, just brush over these lines and Photoshop basically clean it up very nicely. It is maybe some too in this corner. Uh, so it could happen that we can remove it just changing the levels or uh, vignetting or something like that. But I just want to do it so you know I don't run into some issues either. All right, this is good enough, I guess. And after that, I can go back to the editing to, to change the levels now at this point you can change the exposures and any kind of levels you want and uh, now again this is you can add contrast or or you know make big changes here i'm kind of like contrast but sometimes it's you need to be careful with that too much contrast doesn't look so good either so if you like your you know um, mostly i like to make my images kind of warm to the warm um, spectrum here and then more red here maybe i just don't like to, too much green in the image maybe i can remove that some. but again too much red is not good either so let's just do like this one now. let's go on and uh, there is something uh, the effects tool in in uh, Photoshop works uh, really awesome too. If you just change the texture a little bit, you already see that you know the, the image is gonna be a lot smoother. I don't know how much hopefully this can be seen on this uh, on YouTube. And then with the clarity, basically you can make the image sharper, stand out more. But you need to be careful if you add too much then you're gonna have a noisy image again so you just tiny changes at the time not too much at once you can dehaze it basically remove some haze but that's also sometimes that you eventually you need to be very careful if you do too much then you clip too much of the image and it doesn't look natural uh, so 
and we do vignette in here on the slide, so uh, I don't even know. Okay, now then this is kind of done, then I can go down here and to the curves and try to get rid of that green hue. Which can do like this. We can keep the green in the center, so this is gonna be a little warmer. This area, not too dark red. And uh, can go back here and change the highlights a little bit. Uh, something like that, because if you add too much highlight, as you see. You're gonna lose a bunch of details here in this area in the flame nebula. There we go. Something like this. more light just a tiny bit right mm. right here we can do some color grading you can basically change some of the hue or, or colors of certain areas here with this tool here Make it a little more, you know. You can you can basically have a little more details this way too. I think that looks pretty nice, especially here in the flame nebula here. Now, uh, to highlight a little bit of the, you know, the dark area here. Uh, with the back uh, in the backgrounds here of the image or the, the dark area of the image you can change the shadows and you can make it you know more red eventually if like that or greener or any type of color you can choose and uh, highlight it that way I think I really like when this area has like a Hydrogen alpha area, I guess. So we can add a little more red. Make you know, this like really bright. Yeah, I think kind of looks not too bad. If it's too much, too much color, we can change it here. Just take a little bit down. But uh, we're gonna actually. It looks this this nebula looks really nice when it's like warm and popping out and looks fiery to at least to me I like this this kind of course so like something like that with this balancing tool you can change especially the blue in it as you see I don't know maybe if you add a lot of you know this removing blue or uh, yeah I'll add some yellow to it yeah, I don't even know let's just do something on this Then we can do a little bit of sharpening here. Something like that. A tiny bit of noise reduction. Make it smoother. If you don't, not sure about things, you can uh, go closer, zoom in a little bit, so you can see what you did basically. But I think this looks pretty good right now. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you're happy with your image, you can 
click OK here. There you go. And then what you're going to do, we're going to save this again. I usually save it as a copy. And uh, so I keep both. The original from Pixinside also is still there. If for some reason I'm not happy with it, I can always go back. And then I save this copy to the desktop again. Just click Save and OK here. And now we can go back to Pixinside. And then we can see the difference. I open up this image from the desktop. Uh, open. Uh, I think this one, right? Yeah. So, as you see, we removed all these artifacts here. Some, uh, yeah, this one. And, uh, no, this Photoshop, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. But anyway, so this is the image that I'm going to use for further editing. Uh, I think that looks pretty nice. It's like lots of fiery clouds here, or uh, nebula, uh, basically visible. And this frame nebula is also really fiery. So I'm just going to keep this. So I'm going to close the other one. I'm not going to use that for uh, I'm gonna use this one for now. Right, close it, and then what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to stretch the stars. Alright, so I'm gonna, you know, you can just put over it if you have a little bit of a idea what you're gonna see. Anyway, so this image also not stretched yet, so what we're gonna do, Unfortunately, there's also green in it because I couldn't use the uh, green noise removal tool. For some reason, it's probably have something to do with the screen recording. But anyway, I'm just going to go back to linear mode. And then I'm going to open up the histogram transformation. And create a preview window. And then we can start to stretch the stars. And uh, don't want to do too much stretching, something maybe like this, let's see how it looks like, okay, so that's probably look good, and at this point I can remove some, some green, there we go, Maybe we can add some blue to the star a little bit. There we go. I think that's going to be good enough. So we can close this down. So here we have our image. Now to make the stars uh, a little bit smaller and fix inside, there is another option that we can do. Uh, it's called uh, morphological transformation, and uh, I, the, um, I'm gonna go usually with 20%, I mean, or 0 0.20, and uh, you can just see what's gonna what's gonna happen. So as you see, the star starts to basically shrink and get like sharper and uh, at some point uh, it's probably looks I don't even know maybe that's too much something like this they're gonna use so we can close this and uh, so this is kind of what we're gonna get all right so what we do after this in picks inside to get basically produce an image with stars. And I go to process and we're gonna use pixel mat. I open a pixel mat and uh, you open the expression editor 
and then what you need to do, you need to add these two images. So you choose the starless image first, and then plus, type plus, and then uh, click on the star image. Now, if you don't want to, at this point, the two image, like full 100%, both of them are going to be added together. But in, in Pixelnet, you can actually uh, choose a percentage of the stars. If you if you think that's too much stars, then you can already like do like 70% or something. So there is a way to do that in Pix, uh, Pixelnet. I'm not going to do that right now since for that we we'll still have the morphological transformation. If we don't like it, either we can just go back and redo it with less stars. Or, or just use the morphological transformation and make the stars look smaller. All right, so I just click OK. And uh, basically, we can create an image now. And there you go. I think that looks pretty awesome already. Without any further. Uh, and as, as I said, if you, if you think these are too much stars, there's, uh, you know, some people like, really small stars or pinpoint stars, then you can use this tool here and make them even smaller. I think maybe that's actually maybe look a little better. Okay, so at this point I can save this image and it's all done. I'm gonna do like a full screen. I'm gonna save it. You can save it from, from Pixel site in any format you want to. I'm gonna save it to the if you want to edit it, you know, more in Photoshop, then you, the best way to do it, you save it as a TIFF file, or well, if you just want to post it, then you can do a JPEG, JPEG file here and save it to desktop. Well, let's say yes. Uh, I like to save it in a full size. Okay. All right. And then we can look at it, basically. Put this aside and uh, right here. I'll make it to full screen so you see the final image basically. So, this is how I created in Pix Inside and Photoshop an image that I posted online. Um, I worked on that image a little longer, so uh, it's maybe not identical, the colors but I just don't want to make this video too long. It's already long enough, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, also I'm gonna add another video that I just gonna do the same thing in serial. All right, so if, you, if you're interested, check that out too. And if you like this channel, you like the video and you like the content, just please press the like button. Thank you.